There are so many of you hearing me online, and there are so many of you seated here under the sound of my voice, whom Satan has power over you. He has power over your thought patterns. He has power over your emotions. He has power over your will. Has power over your soul. Has power over your spirit. Has power over your body. Power over your finances. Power over your family without you being aware and you don't even know it. Yeah. I met a situation years ago in Pennsylvania. A man and a wife, they were ministers. And the wife had come to Ghana, submitted to my ministry with the husband. The husband was overweight. And he had been to see the best of doctors. And they had told him exactly what to do. And I knew that if he didn't do it, he would die. And for whatever reason, all the things he should do to lose weight, to live, he won't do it. He kept doing all the wrong things to keep putting on weight to die prematurely. And I knew he was going to die. I knew it. And there was nothing I could do. I didn't understand why the guy was so brilliant, intelligent, and couldn't do what was required of him to do in order for him to lose the weight to live. Cut a long story short, he died. He died prematurely. I didn't understand what I understand today. I knew it was a deliverance issue, but I couldn't grab it in those days. I struggled with what I'm about to teach you today, Wednesday and Sunday. And I knew he was going to die. And I told the wife that you got to get ready. He'll die. I'm dealing with a situation right now of an individual facing a situation and don't want to accept it using faith confessions and everything. Don't want to accept it. And pushing me to pray some prayers that won't work. And if this individual don't prepare and arm he or herself, because we are online, the thing is going to happen. And it will be a shock. But this individual is acting so spiritual. I know my God is alive. I know my God can do something. I know my God. I know my God. And I'm just watching and listening. And what baffles me is that this individual is saying all these things because of the moment this individual is in. But has in develop the spiritual capacity and don't have that level of relationship where one can question God. You see, it's God, you just don't get up and talk about how. You have to serve him to a point where even when you miss it and you err, you can look up and appeal to him for mercy. And I'll get into those details later. And you see the difference between David and King Saul. How David can do something, things he shouldn't have done. Commit premeditated adultery, premeditated murder, and God overlooked it. And Saul didn't go to that extent, and God cut him off. And Samuel interceded, and God said, don't even go there with me. Don't try it. Leave it alone. I will not reconsider my decision. It is done. And I'll show you some examples. And it's very, some of these things are very scary when you don't know the dealings of God with a man or a woman. And you want to subject the dealings of God to a particular way of doing things. Please bring her up. Please bring her up this way, please. please. You want
want to subject the dealings of God to a particular way, it's very, very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. By trying to define how God should deal with a person based on your knowledge of the letter of the word and not understanding the person's covenant with God, you can err and be in trouble. The Bible said that if my covenant with the day and the night cannot be broken, then let my covenant with my servant David not be broken. That is very scaring for me and worrying. For God Almighty, Adonai, to say that if my covenant with the day and night cannot be broken, then let not my covenant with a murderer and an adulterer be broken. God, I don't understand such things. I don't get it. Yes. And you can understand God. He said, as the heavens are far from the earth, so are my ways above and far from the earth. It's very, very important for you to concentrate and listen to me, please. I was preaching the other day somewhere. And there was these two guys, they were just talking to one another, talking to one another. And I had to openly rebuke them. I didn't like it because everybody started looking at them. I didn't like it. But it was a very bad habit. So I had to stop it. Let me move on. Please believe me that Satan can have power over you. Yes, he can. The title of the message today, we'll continue on Wednesday and finish next week Sunday, is Who Bewitched You? Tell somebody, who bewitched you? Who bewitched you? So we want to look at what bewitchment is. From the Greek translation, from the Greek word, bewitchment, it means fascinate. Fascinate. Please write it down. Fascinate. Or taken unawares or by surprise. Fascinate. Bewitchment. Number two. To be charmed or to charm a person using satanic power. To charm a person using satanic power. Number three. To put a person under a spell, a spell using satanic power. Number four, an act of misguiding or misleading an individual by a satanic power. The act of misguiding or misleading or causing an individual to err or to walk in error by a satanic power. I know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I know that. But I'm also telling you that knowledge is all round. And wherever you lack illumination in your life, Satan has advantage over you in that area. So working with God is a daily act of humility and surrender. Dying daily. The Bible says for thy sake we die all the day long. Dying daily. Dying daily. The purpose of bewitchment, number one, is to kill. To steal. Three, to destroy. The purpose or the intention or the goal of bewitchment is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. John 10.10. 10. What can be bewitched or who is bewitched? Number one, a person can be bewitched. A person can be bewitched. Number two, a family can be bewitched. Number three, a community can be bewitched. Number four, a nation can be bewitched. 
Number five, a city can be bewitched. Number six, a church can be bewitched. 